everyone, my name is Christian Caparas and this is Postmortem Studies. For thousands of years, direct studies of the human brain required the dead. The main method of the study was dissection, which needed rather inconveniently for the owner physical access to their brain. Despite occasional unfortunate cases where the laboring brain was exposed on the battlefield or the surgeon's table, corpses and preserved brains were the source of most of our knowledge. Another method of investigating the brain is post-mortem examination, where researchers will study the physical brain of a person who displayed a particular behavior while they were alive that suggested possible brain damage. An example of this technique is the work of Broca, who examined the brain of a man who displayed speech problems when he was alive. It was subsequently discovered that he had lesion in the area of the brain important for speech production. This later became known as Broca's area. Similarly, Wernicke discovered a region in the left temporal lobe which is important for language comprehension and processing, which is now known as Wernicke's area. This method of investigation has successfully contributed to the understanding of many disorders. Although lesioning techniques provide the basic information for understanding the relation of the brain to behavior, they are limited in that they cannot be performed on the living brain. As a result, they do not offer insights into more specific physiological processes of the brain. Perhaps it is not surprising that as we become an aging population, the failed brain has become a growth area for scientific research. But contrary to our ideas of corpses as being part of outdated science, the deceased have also begun to play surprisingly active part in perfecting new technology. So that's it for postmortem studies. Thank you for listening.